This package came from Banggood. I hate to keep doing power supplies, but they just keep coming up. This one says it's a 0 to 28 volt, 0 to 2 amp adjustable regulated power supply. We've seen these kinds of things before. What I thought was interesting about this is that it comes in two pieces. One piece is intended to be mounted on the front of an enclosure and then there's a jumper strip that connects it to the second board which is the meat and potatoes of it. The second thing that's unique I think about this power supply is that instead of potentiometers it uses rotary encoders and according to the instructions uh, the voltage encoder actually has a high speed and low speed setting or it happens automatically. This also has a two line display volts and amps both set and output and it costs without a heat sink and without an enclosure $15.39 from Banggood. Now I purchased two of these. So they come in a cardboard box, that's sort of unusual. If this does you any good, there's the SKU. In fact, there's the entire markings on the box. Well, so much for the pass-fail sticker. No instructions of any kind. Inside we find two circuit boards. One holds an Atmel processor and a uh, two-line display, a bunch of uh, resistors to drive the display, and two encoders. And the board measures about a little more than three and an eighth of an inch by two and a little less than two and three eighths inches. And this would mount on the front panel if you were going to try to do that. The second board, like I say, is the meat and potatoes of the thing. Measures about three and a quarter, about two and five eighths. We've got the usual cast of characters. We've got a two-line display that mounts just as so many of these Chinese do on a header. Now they do seem to have two holes drilled down here so that the display is not just floating around on the header as we've seen it do so often. We've got a 10k potentiometer for the backlight. It's made, at least it has this name on it, Highland. has a piece of cable
four inches long. I'm assuming that this cable connects these boards. I'll do a separate video on this. Unfortunately, I have not been able to find a schematic, but I have found both an assembly manual and an operating manual on Banggood's site. Now, I intend to mount this in some sort of a case, so I'm going to try to lay out the front panel of this power supply on the front panel of this case. Here is the front panel, that is, this is the control panel of the power supply. Of course, it would be mounted inside the case. You can see, though, that it pretty well fills up the front of the case. Even if I shove it up so that it's pretty snug against the top of the case, it doesn't allow me a whole lot of room for knobs. This is a pretty small diameter knob. You can see my thumbnail. So what I'm going to do first is finish the front, the control panel, which will constitute the front of the case. There's certainly enough room left over for a power switch and some banana jacks. Everything mounts on the f this side of the board. It's inserted through the holes this way, except for this connector, which mounts to the back side of the board. So we're going to insert all the components from this side, solder them back here, except for this connector, which will insert from what was the solder side of the board, and we'll solder it on the component side of the board. The only thing polarized is the processor, and there's a, a notch or a divot indicated on the silk screen, and it's duplicated in the construction of the socket. I'm going to insert the resistors first, then probably the socket, 10K pot, than the rotary encoders. I used to caution people about plugging these 28-pin devices into the socket to make sure that they weren't inadvertently folding over one of the pins. These rotary encoders are worse. Make sure that you formed the little data carrying pins so that they go in perfectly. You'll end up being so busy trying to get these two big ones in that you may not notice the fact that these little ones are getting folded up and out of the way. Well, I think I have everything installed on the uh, control board. I've plugged in this header. Well, I've soldered this and I take that back. I didn't. I did not solder the socket on the back of this, which you'll have to do. In any event, I've plugged the header in, which gets soldered to this display. Okay. And I've installed the standoffs, and looking at it. It's pretty nice. It tapers a tiny bit towards the top. Now the control panel, of course, will have to be clear 
of all these terminals. So the control panel is going to set like this. which means I may not be able to catch the threads on these rotary encoders. Now that's probably okay if I can get the right size space standoff here and here. These particular standoffs were not included in the kit. Since these encoders are pretty well solid because of these big fastening lugs, if I fasten this unit to the front of the enclosure with four standoffs, it'll be solid enough I'll be able to push on these. I had better solder this connector to the back. I believe in the assembly manual Banggood says to install it this way with the guides down. Doesn't matter because if I install it the wrong way, I'll just install the mating one 180 degrees apart on the power board. Now, some commenters have suggested that there is a seller on eBay that has a heatsink fan designed for the main board. And if they're right, the heatsink will fit here the fan will fasten to the heat sink. I have ordered a couple of fans and a couple of heat sinks. This is the front panel out of one of the many FG085 cases I've accumulated. I'm not married to these uh, knobs. I intend to get on YouTube tonight and look around for some more. This is what I would envision as a front panel. It's still going through some iterations. I've got my label to correct. I intend to put a power switch, a load switch, I intend to install conventional banana terminals and the more the newer recessed shrouded terminals. When I'm satisfied with this front panel layout, I'll publish a PDF of it. It may not be ready with this video, but it will be coming along quickly. Right now I have some number three by I don't know 22 millimeter machine screws. They will be reversed so that the screw heads are here. I'm using them as standoffs because I can't find a, or I don't have readily available, a 14 millimeter standoff, which I think is what would be required. So I'll just run some nuts on, a total of three nuts on these machine screws. Uh, one nut, nut to secure it to the front panel and two nuts to secure this and space it to the front panel. Pay no attention to these. 
So I hope you will stick around for part two. It may be delayed by maybe as many as two weeks while I wait for the heat sink and fans to show up. Thank you for watching. Subscribe and at least come back for the next video. Thank you.